for so I need everyone to listen up for just a few minutes as there is a big problem with Kathy Wood dumping Palantir. Now you guys know I give you the truth about the hype even if it hurts and I appreciate those of you who want that type of content and hit that like button to help the channel out. I really do appreciate that. But this whole drama dominated my private group's discussions coming into the weekend. It was the most asked question on our live stream and we spent a ton of time discussing the ins and outs of every angle possible with this situation. And before I forget, if you want to ask me questions in real time about Palantir or any other situation or stock, the sale is ending to get into the group on a huge discount and you get four courses, exclusive videos, and a ton more. So just check the link down in the pinned comment so you can see everything that we offer. There's even a freebie there just for you to whet your appetite a little bit. So check it out. But back on topic, Kathy selling Palantir is also the most asked question here on YouTube and seeing the comments, it's honestly kind of disturbing. So I kind of need to address it right now here for you guys too. So here it comes. Here's the truth. What Kathy Wood does or doesn't do is completely irrelevant to my investing and should be irrelevant to your investing for two simple reasons. First, I make decisions based upon my own personal due diligence. My conviction is not dictated by what anyone else does or says. My conviction is built based on my research, my due diligence, my time horizon, my plan, and my goals. I did not buy Palantir because Kathy bought it, so therefore I'm not going to sell because Kathy does. I love Tom, but I didn't buy Palantir because Tom says it's to buy. I had set a price target and done my due diligence before I even knew who the heck he was. And if somehow he lost his conviction like others did in this market and sold, I'm still not selling based on that. Nobody else had an influence on my decision to buy the stock and they won't have any influence ever over that decision. Now sure, they can clue me into a stock idea that I wouldn't have normally had. That happens in my group too and I found a couple of great stocks that way. But the stats show I have researched but actually decided against buying about 90% of the stocks suggested to me because my decision is independent of the person giving the recommendation. Not that those aren't great stocks that were sent to me, they're just not right for me. Or in some cases, I'm just not smart enough to understand them. I mean, that happens too. You also have to kind of keep in mind that every time I buy or you guys buy a share of Palantir or Tesla or any other stock, there is a seller on the other side. And that seller at times is going to be a large fund with seemingly high conviction like art. And that leads me to my second point. She is a fund. I am not a fund, but wait, hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I got a little pro tip coming for you in just a second here. So don't jump out just yet. But everyone has a theory as to why she did what she did. But the reality is, unless you understand the exact mechanisms of the fund, what they are doing with the money specifically, what the strategy is, and the why behind that strategy, we're all strictly guessing. Also, remember, she discusses a five-year time horizon for her fund, but that doesn't mean she is a long-term buy-and-hold investor like me, who just buys and actually holds for the long run and doesn't sell a thing unless something fundamentally changes with the business. That's not how it operates because she is a fund. She has to sell to rebalance. She cannot just sit cash heavy and wait. She makes moves for various tax and other reasons based on the rules and goals of the fund. She cannot just buy and hold for five years like you and I can. So sometimes her buy and sells have nothing to do with her conviction in the stock, but everything to do with fund mechanics. I would say a huge chunk of their activity is due to fund mechanics versus actual conviction in the stock. Heck, she sells Tesla all the time and every time she does, it freaks people out. And it does make for easy YouTube content, but it honestly has nothing to do with her conviction in Tesla. It's just fun mechanics. But maybe she did lose faith in Palantir. And I mean, if so, why didn't she sell at all? Maybe she didn't lose conviction at all. Maybe Kramer's just right and she has no clue what she was doing. I was kidding, by the way, on that last one, although he did say that. I don't think she doesn't know what she's doing. I'm just kidding about that. But the point is that the answer to those questions is completely irrelevant to my investing. Who freaking cares? Maybe if I owned ARK Fund, it would be relevant. But even then, what is the point in owning the fund and paying the fee if you don't trust them to manage the fund? Now, I don't own any ARK, so I don't care. And if I did, I'm not going to micromanage her moves either. So the pro tip is this. Following the movements of Kathy and guessing the why is another form of noise. Unless she posts a video about it specifically and gives us the details, the rest is just noise. And noise makes it much harder for you to make good investment decisions, so you have to just ignore the noise. But I wanna hear what you think. Am I off base on this? I mean, should I actually care what Kathy does? I'd love to hear what you think. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.